for the uh, pumping action to work properly, you will need to turn this sideways, turn it in different angles, back and forth, until you get pressure on your handlebar, on your lever. Uh, when there's pressure, you will see pumping action. You will see the fluid coming up with the bubbles coming up uh, and going down. That's when it's working. That shows that it is working, that there is um, opening that is allowing you to do it. If there is no pressure, when you press the uh, squeeze the uh, lever, if there is no pressure, uh, you go, it's going to be very loose, and you're going to, you will see no pumping action here. You're going to see no bubbles coming out, no liquid coming through, nothing. Uh, that means it's not working, so you need to turn this. You need to adjust it, either go this way or this way. Usually turning this way, counterclockwise, works better because that is, or that is opening that opens the uh, the path for the liquid to come through and it has to do with the adjustment it's not just straight forward it's not straight on or off you have to adjust it until it takes it it works all right using a special valve bleed valve for bleeding your hydraulic disc brakes uh, you need to make sure that the scooter is placed upside down or at least at a tilted angle as shown in the picture. And if you're doing the rear brake, try to bring up the rear side of the rear portion of the scooter at higher elevation than the front. So that because the brake, brake line and and the brake lever on the handlebar needs to be at the lowest elevation point. So it would be good if you uh, tilt it a little bit so that the rear is pointing up higher than the front. And I had to make flange designed to bleed this with the uh, bleed valve. Because the bleed valve is bigger, it's a quarter inch in diameter, and the tubing that I got from the hardware store, it is the same size, it's a quarter inch in diameter, but it won't make a tight fit. It's not tight enough for you to uh, pump the fluid, inject the fluid uh, on the caliper it will it can leak if you make a large movement so I had to get a uh, hose clamp to tighten it and I had to get the smallest hose clamp that I could find which is um, rated for at uh, three three eighths three eighths of an inch to um, to about an, an inch and it doesn't make a perfect round circle when you screw in in the screw so it doesn't give you that even pressure all around the tube I applied a little um, padding in there uh, it's it's a um, it's a pad with the adhesive on it, and it's about two, three, about three milli, three, four millimeters thick. I apply that around the tube, and then place that hose clamp on there. That'll give me enough cushion, and it will help squeeze in all nice and even, nice even pressure all all around the tube. So that's what I made and it is effective. 
That's what it looks like when you put on the flange unit onto the uh, bleed valve. And you tighten that hose clamp to, to make it tight so that it won't slip off. And it is nice and secure and, and it has been tested successfully. There is no sign of leakage when I do the uh, bleeding. And it's showing that as I bleed, as I pump the uh, brakes, brake lever, um, when you do that you have to squeeze in the flange at the same time. You have to squeeze in hard. There's going to be a lot of resistance, a lot of pressure uh, wanting to go up. So you have to force it with your hand to press in, squeeze in the uh, flange pump uh, to increase pressure to help to get the fluid injected into the uh, brake line system. At the same time, it will get the bubbles out. It works, it does both at the same time. Both pumping action and uh, extraction of bubbles. And you have to squeeze the brakes at the same time. And you have to make sure that um, that bleed valve, the upper part of the bleed valve is opened enough. It has to be well opened if it's not fully opened, uh, it stops you from doing the uh, bleeding. You will not be able to pump the liquid into the system, and you're not gonna. Be, and the bubbles will not come out either because there's not enough opening. So you need to make sure that you have you allow full opening. You need to turn turn that upper part of the bleeder counterclockwise at least one full turn if not more until it works. When I was making this uh, flange uh, with the bleed, uh, when I was make, uh, making this bleed valve to fit onto the uh, caliper, I had to use the right combination of O-ring gaskets. Uh, turned out that I have to apply at least four of it, four small O-rings, not the large ones, not the thick ones. Somehow they cause, uh, it causes it to leak. Uh, the oil will leak out of that uh, bleed valve. The, uh, the small skinny ones are the, way, are the ones that works and they go right into the uh, hole of the caliper and I had to apply in the right order the smallest one you see in the picture the smallest ring goes in first it goes into the, uh, the thread of the bleed valve first push it in all the way and then you and then you place the second one the third one and the fourth one they are about they are slightly different sizes, but they are pretty much the same size. Uh, I didn't have a trouble. Just uh, they are they are all small ones. But the first one that goes into it is the smallest. You can either put two of those smallest O ring on there first, or put at least one of them. I only had one. Well, actually, it doesn't matter. I have tried two on the on the front and it works fine so that is the right order after you put put the o-rings on that's what it looks like on the thread of the bleed valve when you are done with bleeding the valve the brake lines make sure that the uh, the open close nut mechanism is closed all the way. You will need to use a 8 millimeter wrench to tighten that. Don't over tighten it, just enough tighten it just enough so that it stays on there good without getting loosened. 
uh, and then you can just uh, undo, remove the um, the tubing with the hose clamp, and the job is done. And that bleed valve is on there permanently. It's supposed to be on there and you're not supposed to remove it because if you remove it you're gonna lose all that pressure and the oil is gonna come out it's the bleed valve becomes part of your brake system and the great thing about it is that you can, in the future you can always add more oil increase pressure um, if you need to later down the road or you can loosen the pressure by uh, by uh, releasing the pressure by opening the uh, valve so you can make adjustments uh, but it's gonna be a lot cleaner job because you know you're not gonna be dealing with a lot of uh, oil leaking because it's already a closed system and you just simply open or close uh, the mechanism uh, to bleed your brakes.